Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for creating an online presence and running a business in the breakneck world of whatever century we're in now. It's a great resource if you're getting started, or if, like me, you're just really bad with all forms of technology. They guide you through the process of getting set up and offer you a range of user-friendly templates with previews to make things easy. No expertise is required. I personally have been using it to set up a blog. They offer tools for engaging with social media and analytics, ideal for the business owner or video historian on the go. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and if you like what you see, visit squarespace.com slash jagohazard to tell them I sent you, and enter the coupon code jagohazard to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, let's get on with the video, shall we? Good evening. Today I'd like to talk about another abandoned station in Battersea, but before I do, I think I'm going to tell you how I found it, something you might find useful if you're going exploring yourself. As in, if you yourself are going exploring, not if you're exploring yourself. What you do in the privacy of your own home is none of my business. So, abandoned station. You see, when I encountered this station, I wasn't actually planning to make this video. I wasn't looking for it. I was out on a walk, which is one of the few pleasures still open to us in lockdown. Incidentally, that's why so many of my recent videos have centred on southwest London. That's the part of the world where I live. I was wandering through Battersea when I spotted something unusual. Under this viaduct, some bricked up doorways. Now, if you recall my video where I talked about Battersea Park and Queenstown Road, you'll remember that the original entrance to Queenstown Road is also under a viaduct. It's still in use, in fact. So that made me wonder what I was looking at. Then there are these arches. This brickwork is quite elaborate. Actually, it reminded me very much of the disused station building at Clapham High Street. That had been built by the London Chatham and Dover Railway. So I did a bit of digging and discovered that I had, in fact, accidentally come across the site of Battersea Park Road Station. Battersea Park Road was, indeed, built by the London Chatham and Dover Railway and opened in 1867. At that time, it was called York Road. It was never a large station. In fact, the fact that it wasn't is probably why it survives. Rather than build a separate station building, they just built it into the viaduct. The London Chatham and Dover Railway, as you may recall from some of my previous videos, was not a line that had a lot of money, so presumably they did it this way so they wouldn't have to buy any more land. To be honest, I don't have a lot of information on this station, so most of what I know has come from online sources which also don't have a lot of information on this station. I think there may be some clues about its history in the architectural detail. Some of the other stations on this line were designed by Charles Henry Driver, who also designed the nearby Battersea Park. And given some of the detail similarities between Battersea Park and Battersea Park Road stations, I don't think I'm being unreasonable in assuming that Driver designed Battersea Park Road Station as well. If anyone can say for sure, let me know in the comments section. The station is on the line into Victoria. It's on Battersea Park Road, of course, and is only a short distance from the aforementioned Battersea Park Station. When I say a short distance, I mean they were basically neighbours. They're on the same street. They both had trains into Victoria in one direction and along the South London line in the other. It will come as a surprise to absolutely no one to know that there wasn't much of a market for two stations that provided services to basically the same places. In 1916, the South Eastern and Chatham Railway, which the old London Chatham and Dover was now a part of, decided to close their inner suburban stations and concentrate on providing a faster service into Victoria. In 1923, all the lines through Battersea were taken over by the Southern Railway, who now not only had Battersea Park, but the also very nearby Queen's Road. These days, there's not a whole lot to see of the station other than what I've already shown you. The platforms were built of timber, so nothing was left when the station was closed. The arches were looking fairly dismal in the early years of the century, but have since been restored to their full Victorian glory. The station sits alongside the Battersea Dogs and Cats home, and there's another relic on the bridge. This sign. 
which, judging by the telephone number and the Network Southeast branding, dates from the early 1990s. Also, there was smoke coming out of Battersea Power Station, which is nothing to do with this station. I just thought it was weird. So, that's the short history of a relatively short-lived station, and a few tips on how you can go hunting for old stations yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more. As ever, I'd like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon for being the mysterious brickwork to my viaduct. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.